Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. I've been looking forward to this now for a while. Uh, my good friend Trevor Higgins is on his way here right now to show us something he's been working on, and I'm really excited to get to share that with you. I think a lot of people get involved in production and live event production uh, because they have a variety of skills or they wanna be able to be creative with a skill set and taking a problem that you have on a production and going back to the shop and creating or making a solution uh, that works that you can then take back out on jobs, refine, see how well it works, and then come back to the shop and, and make an even better product. That's just really, really interesting stuff to me. Uh, hopefully you'll think so as well and want to check out Trevor's channel uh, on YouTube here, which concentrates, uh, focuses on his making and the stuff he does in his shop, the projects he does. I've known Trevor for a lot of years now. We've done hundreds of gigs together, and he's absolutely one of the most creative and talented people I've ever worked with. Uh, he's a well-accomplished live sound engineer. If you've played uh, or toured through DC, you may have worked with him in the past. He's an accomplished recording engineer. He's also an accomplished woodworker, uh, cabinet builder, and uh, all around maker. He makes all sorts of interesting stuff, electronics projects, woodworking projects, metalworking projects, uh, and creates some absolutely beautiful artwork along the way. So he should be here any minute. I'm gonna get things ready so we can talk to you. So we're looking at the KRA 400, and the problem that we've had with the original mounting hardware is that it's just not very strong. You've got the original one there, and uh, I guess we can show how that originally works and how these are supposed to mount. So these are almost 30 pound cabinets, yeah. 20, 24 pounds on the scale that we measured. This one's so bent. And that one's already, let's see if we can show how bent that is. Probably be tough to see that in the... And I think part of it is that it doesn't sit flush once it's screwed in all the way. It stands off like, a, like an eighth yeah. of an inch almost, yeah. So you'd have this gap in between the clamp. These are the original clamps, are just a Manfrotto, uh, Manfrotto? I don't know. I don't know. They're Italian. Um, super clamp. And this normally sits in there. Tighten that guy down. Yeah. Wow, these are really they're, bent, holy. They're really bent. Wow, oh jeez. And other than the weakness of this point, the other problem is that you can only suspend it. Right. So you have to have something tall enough to mount it from the top. And let it hang. And yeah. let it hang. Yeah, this one won't go in at all anymore. Yeah. This, one's, this one's so rounded over. That's incredible. Yeah, that's, that's so hilarious. we're not using these. The idea was if we wanted to mount it from the top or the bottom to pin it with something else. Now the first version was uh, 316 stainless because I didn't want to have to deal with painting it or anything like that. But I couldn't turn it, so I had to find something that was small enough to fit in. And it left too much slop, so even mounting from the bottom, the speaker would tilt just a little. Also, there was no way of mounting it from truss. We only had it rigged this way because the holes that ship with the clamp are only in that orientation. So the idea was, and this is quick and dirty mock-up, is to have something like a turret that would click depending on which direction you were mounting it from and then two set screws to Don't tighten it down. It down. Yeah. yeah. Now, this was a little bit cost prohibitive because three pieces of steel, the round ones took a long time to cut through, threading took time on those pieces, and also, if you were to tighten this down, you would needed that Allen key. Yeah, you'd have to carry the tool with you all the time. But the upgrade only uses two pieces, doesn't have the turret or the click stop, but will mount in either direction. And you can just use a crescent, which everybody yeah, has. Yeah, you have that in the workbox for sure. And I added, you know, just a spare nylock to it in case you drop it into yeah. the orchestra pit or something. Disappears, yeah. So how did you design these? Did you start off like pencil and paper or was this a CAD or SketchUp or just in your head? Or I'm old school, so pencil and paper. Pencil and paper to mop. Yeah. And uh, just a lot of measurements on what the cab had pre-existing. And then ran with these for a little while. They got... Figured out what was working. What yeah. was working and what wasn't. 
The other thing was the precision for drilling these, I mean, for drilling all of this, it, it requires something pretty tight and tolerant because if you have no play in here, then you have to make sure that this hole is exactly in the center. Right, yeah. And that's the only way you're gonna get it to pin without it tilting once it's mounted. So pencil and paper and just sort of went for it. And this fine, this version here is version four? This is version four. So version one was? Version one was a steel version of this. Right. Version two actually was the stainless steel, the 316. Version three was a steel version that wasn't as tight. It was another one like this that could mount in either direction. Right, okay. Uh, planning for that. And then version four, we scrapped the turret idea. Went with the cheaper two direction idea. And for these pieces, I bought 5 eighths mild steel, 1018, and then turned them down to within 10 thou of the to diameter get the above. just the way you want it, yeah. And these pins are, these look familiar. Those are the standard ones that come with the mounting for these. If you were to put two okay, K arrays so together, these are the K array pins. we so just robbed them right off of what it was shipped with. And this offset here, which required an extra hole just so it could mount, that was because when you line it up with the pole or speaker stand, it's really hard to get the pin and the speak on with this being so close to it. So I offset it a little bit and then made it so that you could only pin it to this side. If you turn it around, the pin doesn't actually catch telling you that you've got it mounted the wrong way. Which, oh, okay. you know, you'd run into the pole anyway just because of the geometry of the speaker. But if you tried to go the opposite direction with it, it doesn't. So it's sort of designed to give you clearance, but also keep you from screwing it up. So this kind of solves that problem of being able to undermount them on a stand and actually get the speaker above the mount, which uh, with the standard one just is super... Yeah, you, sketchy. <laughs> and you can get two of them at the same height by suspending one and then clamping it from below on the same pole. Right. Or so this will this will hold base. all of that, assuming that your speaker stand will hold it. And this is all specific to the 400 model because there are other ones of these where the speak ons in the end, and mm -hmm. now there's other ones with speaker stand cups in the end as well. <laughs> yeah, those actually have so, vertical NL4 inside yeah, of them. Yeah, set in. We've been using these a lot for zones. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different ways you can use these, and you know, some people use them as entire PA systems, and that works on certain gigs. But they get thrown up a lot to cover things. Like the other night, a cocktail uh, party, they, it was in the corner just to put some speeches into the room. You're not using the sub that often. And um, individually, it's great as a low profile sort of distributed sound for speech. Because yeah. you can hide them on truss. You can put a white sock over them. You can. So with that, you could hang this off of a truss from above. Yeah. If you, uh, yeah, that's really nice. I probably wouldn't recommend undermounting it from a truss because no, you no. have a way of securing it yeah, to go to back. Yeah, back, but you could certainly hang it from a crossbar oh, yeah. truss. So materials-wise, how did you go about selecting what you used? I wouldn't have a clue where to start on what's safe and what, what the best option would be. Well, we definitely wanted something that was fireproof. Yep, definitely. Um, preferably something that was black. Uh, with the original stainless steel, that was, you know, that worked out great and it was, wasn't going to rust or anything like that. It's definitely strong enough, but I couldn't get it in a size that was within the tolerances and I feel more comfortable turning the mild steel than I do the stainless. Okay. I mostly have HSS stuff. So I got a 5 8 mild steel and then just turned that down to within 10 thou of the uh, aperture. And then also 1018, just regular bar stock, quarter inch thick. And then after I drilled out everything and then tapped for these um, machine heads, I just recessed those, super glued them in place so that you could still get them back out if they break, but they're not going anywhere as you thread into them. Right, they're not going to spin on you. And then included the nylock nuts after I etched all the steel to clean it and then covered it with black oxide, like gun barrel black. Right, yeah, and you see that in the video, you go through that process of, of uh, was it dyeing them? Is that coloring them? What's the what's the term for that, I guess? Uh, the term is bluing them. Bluing them, okay, right on, okay. But I had to do it that way for the corrosive resistance 
it works out that it's black and it doesn't change the diameter. So if I were to just rattle can it with paint, then I lose my tolerance. Right, so you'd run the risk of it not, not fitting properly and then you'd wear away the paint over time. Right. And it would shit out paint all over the place as it scrapes off. And this is a chemical process and if I need to make it darker or anything, I just add more. So that's gonna stay looking good for quite a while, yep. if not forever. If it works for gun barrels, it'll work for rigging. So there's an extra chamfer on the side that receives the ball end of the pin. So this can only go in one way and then click to strength. Because seating it the wrong way, there's no recess for that ball under the pin, so it just slips out. You won't get that. that uh, yeah. Nice solid feel. Although I know some bonehead's gonna take this off and turn it around at some point, so maybe I should put arrows on it. So we know yeah, so once you out. start moving it around, it's gotta yeah. get put together the right way again, yeah. I did stamp the version numbers on everything, so if pins get mixed up and we can, they're not exactly the same because they were made by hand and not by a machine, so having them go back to home after they get mixed up at a gig is a good thing. How many hours do you have into these? These specific ones, uh, I think I did them in about 12 hours total. For this this set here? Yeah, for four of these. Okay, that's that's not bad, but total development. Oh yeah, look. You've got quite quite a bit of time into them as a, as a concept. As a this, concept, probably Once you 80. had it dialed down to, the first version was test fitting, yeah. getting it works, kind of figuring out what features you wanted to add, and once you got down to what you actually wanted, you were able to knock these out in a pretty reasonable amount of time with the, with the tools. The video makes it look really quick. Your video looks makes it look very simple and very quick, and I, I know it wasn't. But still a reasonable amount of time compared to living with a speaker that's not cheap, that doesn't hang very well. Right. Definitely a worthwhile investment to, to get these working. Oh, totally. And, and the build time, I mean, it could have been quicker if I didn't pay attention to the tolerances, but I wanted it to be machinists right. 12 hours for four of these, 10 minutes for one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe that you put this together in 10 minutes. That's a pretty... I love quick little mock-ups because it's, it's hard to describe to people. Uh, it's going to have a turret and a catch that's spring-loaded and then set screws and they raise one eyebrow and it's like, all right, all right, give me 10 minutes. Here's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'd probably spend a couple hours trying to draw this and it wouldn't look right. It would look... Uh, as far as specialty tools goes, you obviously, you're using the metal lathe on this part. Could you have done that without a lathe? Could you have found stock close enough to make it work or? Probably. Now, I wasn't searching anything metric or anything really specialized, just, you know, regular sources. And they have some pretty standard stuff for imperial measurements. This is as close as I that can get. That was as close as you get It otherwise. wasn't good enough. Yeah. So on this f finished model, total cost. The super clamp's pretty standard. You can buy those anywhere. So this, this KRA clamp that they call on their website is a, it's just a super clamp. It looks like an off-brand one. It's, it says Kupo, but it's a Manfrotto super clamp. There's nothing different about that at all. Uh, so this part here, I guess, with what you've got in materials. All four of them, um, including the metal oxide bluing, all told it was 72 bucks for the four. Right, so not too much money in steel. Most of the money was in time. Totally in labor. In labor, which, yeah, you know, absolutely. Not doing the turret made all the difference in labor costs. So I, I think this, what you've created, is a heck of a lot easier just to hand to somebody and have them put it together uh, rather than trying to explain this, this factory-made system that just really isn't that safe. Yeah, and how long does it take to thread something in? find the only roadie that has a quarter to tighten it down. Right, yeah. Compared to what we always do in that extent. Yeah, and you're, you're done, you've got a nice secure pin there. Um, and, like you said, an opportunity now to safety it. So are you gonna make more of these? Is the plan to continue refining them? Unless we get more speakers, I don't, I don't think I need to improve on this or make any more. Um, not going into production on these. I'm sure somebody on the video I'm, is going to ask, but yes, I'm currently not planning on going into production on not these. Not production, But no. you do have a video that shows how they're made. We've talked about the tolerances. Um, if somebody's interested in making their own, obviously uh, Trevor's uh, YouTube channel is the place to, to contact him about uh, measurements and dimensions. And I, obviously then if you make them the liabilities on you. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. anytime you're hanging something, obviously you've got to be, uh, got to be sure you're qualified to make this. 
Uh, well, I, I made eight of these pins for only four clamps and gave it a stress test, and right. it'll do a 30-pound box. So you went through the process of making sure you were using the right materials, building, and you've got experience building it safely. I definitely don't want to encourage people to rush out and start homebrewing rigging methods. That's Absolutely. definitely not the point of this video, uh, but it can be done if you know what you're doing and you approach it correctly. If you have the skills, the tools, the time, uh, and the interest, but uh, not something to take lightly if you've never done it before. Agreed. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this type of video, let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And if you're in the DC, Maryland, and Virginia area in the future, uh, and you've got a project or a gig or a system you would like to share with the channel, uh, let me know, dcsoundup at gmail.com or leave me a comment. Get in contact with me and we'll set that up. I'd love to have more folks stop through for interviews or to share projects you're working on.